Hey there, Stephen Rosell here, Maya Specialist, Senior Technical Specialist at Autodesk, and I'm going to review the controller node that was added to Maya 2017 and updated in the most recent update. So this is a bit of an obscure node that most people won't have to deal with, but if you're a character rigger or a character TD, then it may be something that you can find a use for. So there are three kind of primary uses for controller nodes right now. Uh, one is that it allows for custom pick walking. So you could build your rig in a way that would allow an animator to step from one piece of the rig to the other and bypass the Maya dependency graph. Two is it allows you to quickly hide and unhide your rig control objects independent of their object type. So they could be curves or locators or geometry. It doesn't really matter. You can show or hide them all at the same time based on this kind of secondary type. And then three, it allows you to tag your rig for parallel evaluation and GPU acceleration. So we, in 2016, uh, parallelized Maya so that it runs on multiple threads, but it also accelerates on the GPU deformation. Um, previously, though, if your rig was not animated, this was not uh, the case. So in other words, it wouldn't parallel evaluate and it wouldn't GPU accelerate. Now, if you tag your control objects and Maya recognizes that, as soon as you touch or begin to manipulate your rig, it will automatically tell Maya to trigger parallel evaluation and GPU acceleration. So now let's take a look at a practical use case for controller nodes. So for starters, what we see here is a control rig, and you can see I've got different parts and pieces to this control rig. I've got different controllers for different types of motion. Um, each of these is either a locator or a curve, or it could piece of, be a piece of geometry. I'm going to select them all, and uh, what you'll notice is that in the outliner, if I shift select, you can see that these are scattered about uh, into a standard Maya hierarchy. So some of these are parented with things like IK handles, as well as things like constraints and whatnot. And this could get really messy really quickly if I try to navigate this. For instance, if I grab the hand and then I go down, all of a sudden I have the shape node selected and then I might have the IK handle node selected and then I might have the constraint node selected just by using my arrow keys. So an animator can get bogged down in the clutter of this rig. So what I can do instead is basically grab all of these nodes and under my rigging menu set, I can go to the control uh, menu and I have two new options. One is tag as controller. I'm going to tag each one of these as controller and what you can see is that added little output here which is basically a, a connection to that control node. So now what I want to do is start to create a custom hierarchy with this. So I'm going to take the hand and I'm going to shift select the elbow. I'm going to parent those. You have to have the controller node created first and then you can create the parent-child relationship. So now I'll continue to go up the hierarchy for the shoulders, I'll grab the elbow here and parent that to the shoulder. I'll take the two shoulders and maybe I'll parent those to that kind of middle back control and so on. Uh, and then I might want to continue up the spine. Maybe I want to parent these and then maybe I want to parent these. And now I'll go to the other side. I'll, or rather the bottom of the character, I'll parent the legs with the knee controllers. And then maybe I'll go all the way up to the hip controller here. I'll do the same thing on this side. I'll quickly go in and create a parent-child relationship there, up to there. And let's just say that that's about what I want. Now what you can see is I can quickly step back and forth just using my arrow keys between my controllers. I can go up to the elbow, step back and forth between the elbow, go up to the shoulders, step back and forth between the shoulders, and then I can go up and down the spine joint and then back down each arm. Same thing with the legs. I can go from the foot to the knee, up to the hips, back down to the knee, across over to the other knee, back and forth between the feet. So as a practical example, I can take the hand, I can pose this, and then I can go up, quickly pose the pull vector constraint, and then I can go over to the other side of the character, down to the hand, and quickly, again, just kind of start to navigate through my rig without ever really having to think about what's selected. So I might want to grab the foot controller here, pose that, go up to the knee controller, and then step over to the other knee, step down to the other foot, and so on. So again, this gives me a custom hierarchy that the animator can step through and completely bypass the standard messy Maya hierarchy. Now, the other thing this allows you to do is do a quick display uh, 
control over your control objects. So you can see that each one of these is a separate uh, type of object. Some are meshes, some are curves. You may use locators. Now under the display options, there is a show controller ob objects and there is a hide controller objects. And these do exactly what they would say. They allow you to hide all of your controller objects. So anything that has been defined as a controller object gets hidden. Anything that gets defined as a controller object gets shown. You can see that this I did not actually add to that uh, list of nodes as controller objects, so it's actually just ignoring that, even though it's a standard curve, just like everything else. So it's a quick way of showing and hiding. And then lastly, it's a quick way to tell Maya to parallel evaluate and GPU accelerate your rig. So traditionally, if I don't have any animation on my character, Maya will not parallel evaluate that rig. As soon as I touch the rig now, because these are defined as control objects, now in the background, if this is a complex rig, Maya is going to evaluate that rig in parallel, and it's also going to accelerate any deformation, whether that be skinning or whether it be uh, delta mosh or blend shapes or whatever. It's going to accelerate those um, just as I begin to manipulate it, which is, again, just a, a nice, simple way of a, of a rigger telling Maya what needs to be accelerated and what doesn't. So that's the functionality that exists in Maya right now. You can imagine some other cool stuff potentially being done with this. For instance, it would be awfully cool if you could tag pre-selection highlighting. For instance, if you hovered your mouse over something that you defined as a control object, if it pre-highlighted it and or pre-selected it, and maybe even gave you some custom menus. Now, I'm just uh, thinking ahead, but these are not things that are currently in there, but you get the idea kind of, of, of the things that you could potentially do with control nodes by uh, making them essentially first-class citizens and telling Maya that they have kind of special properties and you want Maya to treat them differently than regular nodes. But again, right now it's focused on those, those three main areas that I pointed out in the beginning. Now, at a low level, if I go into the node editor and I were to graph any one of these nodes, let's actually just grab the footnote and take a look at this, what you can see here is that this actually is a very simple setup. I selected the foot, I added a control node, and it added this node here, which is basically just an output from the uh, left foot controller. And if I take a look at the attribute editor, it has all of the information about what it's connected to, but then it also has the parent child information in here. Now, uh, one thing I mentioned, didn't mention, I mentioned you can side uh, step between hierarchies, but you can also do uh, sibling and grand sibling relationships. So for instance, the hands are grand siblings of each other. So they're kind of interconnected and the the uh, elbows are siblings or grand siblings of one another as well. But of course, these can be totally scripted as well. So these are just standard Maya nodes. So that process that I went through where I manually built the controls, it's not necessarily something that you're going to do manually, but these can be created with Mel or Python. So this would just be simply something that would be added into your custom rigging scripts so that they would get auto-created onto your control objects and all of the various hierarchy relationships would, would be kind of uh, inherently applied or, or automatically applied. So that pretty much wraps it up. Hopefully you'll find a use for those and uh, be able to take advantage of them. Thanks for your time. Bye.